Okay, so testing one, two, just making sure that you can see me and you can hear me. Hopefully everything's working okay. Uh, give me a shout out in the chat and let me know that you're there and let me know that you can see me and hear me okay. Uh, welcome to Motivational Guitar Monday. Today what we're going to be doing is talking about a Metallica tune to try and develop some of our alternate picking. Donald is here. How you doing, Donald? He's here from South Carolina. Tom Jensen is here. Uh, always good stuff. Thank you so much, buddy. Uh, let's see here. I got my contacts in. Aiden is here. Valentine is here. Martin is here again. How you doing, buddy? Lamb Chop is here. Russ is here. Scotty is here. Johnny Baines is here. How you doing, Johnny? Uh, Timothy is here. Keith is here. Mad Dog. Noah. Blair. Daywalker is here. It's Stein time. Yes, it is. Uh, thank you so much, Jamie, Andy, everybody. Thank you. Again, we already have a couple hundred people here, so I can't say hi to everybody, but thank you so much for taking time out and uh, hanging out with me, okay? So again, I just want to give you something kind of fun. Um, I wore my black pants today and it got me thinking about Metallica, so here we are. I'm going to tell you a little quick story here, and then we're going to get going with this. This song, we're going to be talking about Whiplash and by Metallica, and this song was really iconic to me because when I was a kid, I was playing along with a bunch of different songs, you know, learning how to play by ear, all these different things, and some of the things I was playing along with, I was connected to, but it, it, it didn't always feel like I was locked in, and I remember trying to learn... Um, Whiplash by Metallica and you know I had a really hard time alternate picking before this you know I could down pick and that sort of thing but I just I kind of sucked at alternate picking and for some reason something about this song clicked in my head and I could I could just zone in on the sound of the alternate pick and feel it with this song and I don't know what it was, but it was just, it was an, an amazing feeling. And so this song has always had a real soft spot for me uh, in terms of playing. And so I thought, hey, it would be fun to talk to you about this and hang out for a little while. So Ron, you're awesome as well. And uh, Louis is here. Let's see here. Psy Guitar is here. Jarek is here. Joe is here. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this song, how to play it, just briefly, and then some things that you can do to practice this, especially in 2021, all the amazing things that we've got, the devices and things like that, that can help us with our practicing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the actual technique here. And what I want to focus on primarily is simply the alternate picking. Now, I know you've heard me talk about this before, but I do want to back up a little bit and just chat about this. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I've got a proper guitar pick. And what that is, I don't know. It all depends on what works for you. Okay, I use a thicker pick. I tend to use 2.0 picks, uh, 2.0 millimeter. I like a sharp point on the pick. And again, we've talked about this before, how when you're doing palm muting, you want to find that right point, right past the, where the bridge and the string meet and you set the kind of the karate chop part of your hand down and then you fold over and you want to start trying to figure out where the ideal sound is for what it is that you're looking for. Now, again, we'll go through this real quick just so everybody understands this. I'm not pressing in really hard because if I press in really hard, I'm going to start making that string go a little sharp in terms of pitch. So I'm really just touching the string. And trying to figure out where the most ideal place is to get the palm muting. Now, there's a couple of spots that I use. One is right, and again, you have to use your ear. It has less to do with the way I describe it, more to do with the way it feels and sounds to you. But as I'm playing, if I'm there, I'm not getting a palm mute. If I'm right there, I'm getting a palm mute. Now, if I move over just a little bit further that direction, you can hear it tighten up just a little bit more. And sometimes when I'm playing something that's really fast, I like to move up just a tiny little bit. Hopefully you can kind of hear the difference between the two. Just because it tightens it up a little bit. But it's all up to you. It, it, it depends on what feels best to you and what sounds best to you. Now, as I'm doing that, the other thing I want you to think about is that what I'm not doing is turning the pick this direction. Because if I turn the pick this direction, I'm just going to get that slicey sound. 
I don't want that. I want more of a percussive sound so I can cut through the string back and forth, which is why I'm using a thick guitar pick so it, it goes right through the string. It doesn't bend and get stuck on the string, right? Now again, that doesn't mean a thicker guitar pick is better. It's all what works for you. I'm just telling you how it works in my brain. So with a thicker guitar pick, it, it cuts through there. And then with a, a finer point on the pick, I'm able to slice through there more too versus like a more of a jazz rounded pick. I tend to have a bit of a sharper pick. And again, you know, one thing I would recommend to you if you've never really done it before is go out and buy a bunch of different kinds of picks and figure out what works best for you. And don't feel bad if you keep switching. You know, I, I tell this story all the time, but Paul Gilbert just recently, well, recently, probably in the last like three years maybe, but um, had gone to a thinner guitar pick from something he was using. And he's Paul Gilbert. He's one of my favorite guitar players on the planet. And he still finds uh, that there are times that he needs to switch to something else. So we're all different that way and it's okay, all right? So what we're gonna do here then is as I add this palm mute, and I start thinking about, you know, how much, I, now I, I'm not completely flat. I am turned just a little bit like this. I just don't want to turn too much to where I get that slicing sound. Uh, Grant says, sounds like I was made for loving you, the middle part of that, and it does. Yeah, it's got that kind of kind of sound to it for sure, okay? So the picks I normally use are Hawk guitar picks. Um, I don't have any on me right now. I've used up just about the last one that I had. So um, the ones I'm using right now are these John Petrucci picks. I'll show you that right there. Okay. But normally I use these Hawk picks, which I love so much. Um, they actually have a really nice um, kind of curvature to them. And they make it really, really easy to make things sound very, very clean. For me anyway. But I'm just using these because I don't have any with me right now. But, but anyway, so if that kind of makes sense. So what I'm going to do with this song then is, again, thinking back when I was a kid and learning how to connect to it, the first thing that I would do, and really the only thing I had at that time, was a metronome. Now, I'm not going to use an actual physical metronome at, at this point. I'm just going on Google, and I'm typing in the word metronome, and it gives me a metronome. Okay, so if I click this, I've got it set at 160. Now you could set this anywhere you want, but I've just got it kind of about where the song is, okay? So here we go. So what I want you to notice is when I first started playing these things, I would kind of just kind of line up, okay? I'm not jumping in, you know, sink or swim. I'm just trying to line up. So that's what I'm doing is I, I would sit and I would practice this over and over and over just working into that. Now, if I was working on a more complex song and it had a really hard part, I would still do something like I'm showing you right now. Okay? I just, I, I want to synchronize my body and my technical ability to the beat. And because I don't have the drummer right now, I'm going to use the metronome. Okay? The, the, the pick I'm using right now is this pick. Okay? Again, what I normally use are hawk picks. I just don't have them with me right now, but this is what I'm using right now until I get some more. Okay, so I just keep lining up with that metronome. Okay, and not only am I playing rhythmically, but I'm also thinking dynamically as I pick. I want to make sure my down and my up pick sound very similar in terms of their dynamic attack. Okay? And then as I get that worked up, I also want to be thinking about how that palm mute actually sounds, right? If I'm... Now, I'm not saying that that's bad. You can see it's a lot more dead because I'm moving really far forward. I'm just saying you got to figure out what works best for you, okay, for, for a particular style of music. Or you can get different kinds of palm muting sounds by exploring those. There's not just one sound, so you have to kind of look at that. So that's what I would start doing is developing that. Now, the song itself, again, the way I play it, you might play it different than me, but the way I play it is this. So what I'm doing there is I'm playing 
two sevens, two sixes, and two fives on the fifth and fourth strings. So the first thing I'm doing here, I gotta move from that palm muting of the sixth string to the two sevens of the fifth and fourth strings. Now what I want you to notice is as I'm playing this sixth string, I'm deadening out all these other strings so they're not gonna make noise on me. Okay, and then I'm gonna press down on these two sevens and when I do that, I'm actually gonna use the tip of my index finger to lightly touch the sixth string. That way it's giving me uh, a bit of a security blanket when I move from that sixth string to the fifth string. If there's any residual you know, vibration from that sixth string, I can kill that with the tip of my ring finger. So as I... As I move down, I can touch that string and stop that string. Okay, so let me just play this a little bit. Again, it's less about the song and more about the technique, and you can certainly, you know, look up tab or whatever you want for this as well to learn it however you like. So as I'm playing this, I go into that 765, and then I'm gonna go to E. Now, when I go to E, I can drop down to this E. Okay, or sometimes what I like to do is I'll play, and all I'll do is I'll just head up to the seventh fret here on the fifth string, leave that sixth string open, and I get an E power chord by doing that. Well, really not an E power chord because I'm not using the fifth, but, but I'm, you, gotta have, you have to understand, I'm going right back into the palm muting after this, so there's not a lot of time. So sometimes I like to just stay there. as opposed to, but either way is perfectly fine, okay? And I've watched some live videos of this. Actually, this morning I was watching a few different live videos, and if you watch uh, James and you watch Kirk, sometimes they'll even do uh, something like this. Instead of just playing the power chord like this, they'll play the full power chord, adding the six string on, so you're going. Like that, and that's okay too. If you know me, you know, <laughs> when it comes to songs, I like to play songs. I've, I'm not near as concerned with playing it exactly the way an artist played it. You know, I get it in the, the ballpark, but I always try and figure out how to play it a way that makes sense and is fun for me as well. So anyway, that's what we've got here. So one thing I can do is I could go back to that metronome then and start implementing this whole thing. See, either way, no matter what it is I'm doing, I can, I can do any of those and it'll be just fine. So I practice that. Now again, the first thing I need to do is develop that alternate picking. You see? Hey, Dave Wanklin's here. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Dave is here from England. Lee is here. Pablo is here. Very cool. So that's what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll build the tone and the feel of how I'm approaching it. Then I start building out the rudimentary elements of playing it. And then once I get that built, then I can start working into this, right? Okay, so uh, Perry is here. Hi, Perry, the Time Prophet is here from England as well. Very cool. So now what I wanna do is just show you kind of a level up in terms of practice. So one thing that you can do that's a really great idea is you can head out to YouTube, for instance, find a drum cover of this song. And sometimes you can find drum only covers where it's just the drums and you could practice along with that. Sometimes you can find a, a backing track or something like that. And if anybody's got any ideas, throw it out in the chat. Maybe it'll help somebody else. Uh, there used to be a, a website called guitarbackingtrack.com, but it's been closed down, I do believe. Um, but they used to have a bunch of different backing tracks on there. But what I did was I found the MIDI track for the drums. Now, the MIDI track isn't great by any means, but I wanted to show you another option that you can do if you don't just want to play along with, you know, a click track or, um, you know, a metronome or something like that. So let me show you this. So I've got a piece of software here 
right there. It's called Superior Drummer. It's made by a, a company called Toontrack. Now, they also have a program called Easy Drummer, and Easy Drummer's awesome, too. I'm just showing you this. So what I did this morning is I went out and I found a MIDI uh, track of this song. And I just cut off the beginning so it wouldn't be so long, and then I put a little click at the beginning so it sounds like this. Now, it's not the greatest, you know, click track in the world or, or whatever, or, you know, jam track to use, but I'm going to try and use this right now and play along with this. So here's what we have. You get the idea. I'll come back over to me here. So I'm just using this track to try and jam to. And, and the beauty of like an easy drummer or a superior drummer or something like that is it comes with all kinds of different uh, beats, um, rhythms, things like that, that you can use for all kinds of different things. So anyway, so I could use this. Now, when I was a kid, I didn't have this kind of availability, but I have that now where I can practice along. So let me show you here. I'm going to try my best to play along with this. You can probably hear the track better than I can, but I'm going to try and play along and see how this goes. idea. So it's really fun to be able to practice along with these sorts of things to develop these techniques. And what I love about this song is that there's so much alternate picking. And if you were just trying to develop your alternate picking, you could listen to this song and not even worry about all the other little parts. You could literally just do something like this. With the song. just to develop that particular technique, even though you're not playing the whole song. And once you kind of get this all dialed in, then you could start adding in just a couple of things. Maybe you just start adding, you know, just that thing, or if you want to play it, you know, that, or however you like to play it, and start developing that. And then later in the song, there's that. Uh, the Time Prophet says, I thought James Hetfield did all down picks, not on a song like this. You do down picks, you know, if you're playing. Uh, you know, then you would use your down picking, uh, but it's impossible to down pick this fast. So he would absolutely use down picking when down picking is possible. Um, but a song like this, you'd definitely be alternate picking for this. So anyway, it's a lot of fun, and like I said, it, it brings back really fond memories for me because I remember playing along with this as a kid and finally feeling that experience of locking in and just, just a wonderful feeling of going, 
I'm in. Like this really feels right as opposed to just I'm kind of doing it, but I'm kind of not. And it, it was just really, really cool. So anyway, hopefully this helps you a little bit, gives you some ideas of things to work on for this week uh, for our Motivational Guitar Monday. Please do me a favor. If you're looking to learn how to do some things with guitar, head over to guitarzoom.com. Check out the membership. Check out my guitar courses, things like that. I always appreciate that. Spread the word, share a video, whatever. And uh, most importantly, stay positive, stay motivated, and keep practicing every single day. Remember, practice on the days that you eat, and I will talk to you all very, very soon. Of course, I'll be back next Monday to chat about something new, all right? So